It is grilling and family picnic season. My question is, hey, why don't my dishes turn out like the ones that I see posted on Instagram? Well, here to help us today with that and to break down better ways to grill, how to keep your food safe, is Chef Al Romano. He is the chef and instructor and professor at culinary arts at Guilford Technical Community College. Now you can text in your grilling and cooking questions to the number that you're seeing on the screen right now. That's 336-379-5775. All right, Chef, first things first, you say we need to know our grill. Don't we know our grill? Got to know it. I know this grill because I've had it like a hundred years. So first thing is you got to keep it nice and clean, nice and clean. So there's a couple of ways you can clean your grill. You can buy chemical stuff. This is not chemical. This is like an orange kind of cleaner. You just spray it on there and it, let it soak and heat it up. I, I like the best way to keep it clean is after you're done using it, turn it on really high, shut it off and it'll burn everything off. That's one of the best ways to do it. Then you could use, um, I don't use a grill brush because of the bristles. This one I got off of Amazon like for 10 bucks. It's like a wireless grill brush. Kind of scrape it. Here it goes. Okay, so we know that we need to keep it clean for sure. I know everybody always either wants it smoky or they want like the, um, the grill marks on it. Not every grill is going to do those two things. Correct, correct. So uh, if it, a, a grill has grids in it, a griddle is flat. So like a flat top is a griddle. That's the difference really. So this is a, a grill and this is grilling. It's not barbecuing. We're really not barbecuing on this. We would need a smoker or something, charcoal wood for a barbecue. So this this is actually just grilling. So. Okay, so one say, is getting it warm. The other one is getting it warm and also giving it smoke flavor. Correct, we're cooking it not getting warm, cooking it. Mm -hmm. We want to cook it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> so. All right. So what is the safest way to start a charcoal grill? Because I know that a lot of people have problems with that. Uh, you can buy the, that, this charcoal out there right now. You could just uh, match light and just throw it in there and start try it up. Pile it when you, you want to pile all your briquettes up in one area and then start it and spread them out. You want to create heat zones in whether it's a charcoal grill or this kind of grill. Here you got the temperature variation. So I can keep it on high on one side, low on the other. And so I know I'm hot and cold and keep everything separate. You want to keep your food separate because things cook at different temperatures. Okay. And while it might be tempting to kind of peek at your food, do you keep the lid closed? Do you keep the lid open? What is, what is the best way? Uh, it's whatever you prefer. I like the lid closed, it kind of keeps it in. It, it kind of surrounds heat, everything. So I, I keep it closed and it gives it more of a smoky flavor when it's closed. Okay, and let's talk about flavor because there are certain ways to add flavor, whether you're going to do like a um, marinade or if you're going to do a dry rub or if you're going to do like a barbecue sauce and when you actually put it on your food. Right, so certain foods you can marinate the night before, it's fine, but like a fish or something like that, you don't want to do it more than 15, 20 minutes prior to doing it because fish is delicate. Chicken you could do probably the night before but actually it, it almost denatures it. Uh, same thing with beef, like uh, tenderloin, a nice tender piece of meat. I wouldn't do it until I, right before I throw it on the grill. Now, tough pieces of meat, I definitely would put in a brine or something to soak overnight. Even in chicken, like if I'm doing whole chickens, I could set that in a, in a salt water brine before I cook it, like a spatchcock uh, uh, chicken, something like that. That would be kind of, I would do that. Okay, sure. let me ask you this. A lot of times people want to put like a syrupy glaze that has like the honey or the maple syrup or something like that, and they want to put it on at the beginning. Tell me why we need to be putting it on at the end. Well, if you like burnt food, put it on in the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, um, it'll burn right up. Sugar, that's what burns. That's what burns. Anything with, with it has a high sugar content will burn quick. So that's the last thing you want to do is put that, that marinade or barbecue sauce or anything sweet on it, which has a lot of sugar, right at the end, the last couple of minutes. And just to give it that nice little shine, really nice. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I know we're gonna be talking about how to make the best burgers coming up and how to mm -hmm. like line up all of our food. I know you have chicken and fish there. What should we know about chicken and fish when we're grilling? First of all, cooking to temperature. Uh, like I have salmon here, which I cooked. And um, salmon, you could go to 
you know, you don't, you can, you know, you can, like you've had salmon sushi, so you don't even have to cook it if you don't want to. But some, most people like it cooked if they're grilling it. So, but you could serve that rare. The chicken, on the other hand, you cannot serve rare. It has to be cooked all the way through. It has to be 165 degrees, and and you tap it with a thermometer if you if you're not sure, or cut it open if you're not sure. Um, and as I see, make sure there's no a blood coming out of it. So so th those are the, the the main things. Just cooking to temperature and keeping it separate. Keep it's it not off, just by but, look. So you're saying we really do need to have a meat thermometer. Well, if you know you're you know you've been doing it forever. Um, yeah, I would definitely, I don't care. I don't care how good you are. The mom is a sure fire way to doing it. Okay. We do have a quick question that I can ask before we head to the break. It says, how do I cook a thick chicken breast? Same way you cook a, a thin chicken breast, but it's going to take longer, but lower heat. You don't want to, so the fatter it is, you, you want to cut down the heat a little bit more because the inside won't cook. So you want to just take your time cooking. It's going to take longer. So at size definitely makes a difference on how something, how long it's going to take to cook. So if I, I had a fat piece there, that took longer than that smaller piece. So. Okay, understood. All right, we're going to continue yep. on yep. with the grilling and the cooking, and we're taking your questions as well. Besides what the biggest mistakes are, we're going to be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 